Hello, this is Sylvanesh with Time to Revive, Revive School. And I want to take a, a few minutes here to explain to you, uh, teach you how to use the wristband and gospel card. Uh, this is just a, a nice little tool that our ministry uses to teach people how to share the gospel. And um, we have five colors that we use. We have five scripture verses that we use. Uh, it's a very simple way to do it, but a very powerful way to do it. Uh, in order to engage somebody out on the street when, when you uh, are uh, sharing the gospel with them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a different ideas on how this wristband can be very helpful for you and the gospel card. So. Uh, what we normally do when we go out on the street and we meet someone, we usually engage them in, a, in small talk, in a small conversation. How are you doing? Uh, what brings you here today? What, how's your day going? Different things like that. Why do, why do we do that? We do that to uh, create this relationship in a very short time frame. Uh, because oftentimes when you share the gospel on the street, you may have five minutes, you may have ten minutes, it varies. But you, I always tell people, you want to have a time to create a, a relationship before you just go into sharing the gospel. And so, uh, after you have that moment, a few minutes of talking with somebody, how their day is going or whatever, then a question that we always ask them, or most of the time we do ask them, it's a good lead in to the gospel. And that is, how could I pray for you today? And uh, sometimes I'll ask the question, you know, um, I have a question for you. It's a question that you may not hear off all the time, but my question is, would you have anything that you would like to have prayer for? So there's different ways you can get into that conversation. But when you do ask the question, how can I pray for you, and they tell you what they want prayer for, then oftentimes in the past people will they'll say, well, I will pray for you later, or I'll, pray, I'll remember you in my prayers. What we like to do is we like to pray for that person right then and there. So we ask them, could I pray for you right now? And you pray for them what they asked for prayer for, and not a bunch of other things. You just, you're specific, you pray for them, and we always tell people, you know, have a 30 second prayer. That's, that's enough. If you go much longer, people will forget what you were praying about anyways. So we have a, sh we all, you know, we say, have a short prayer and leave it at that. And then, after you've, you're done praying, then you say, well, I'd like to give you a gift. Could I give you a gift today? And that is the time that you present the gospel wristband and you give them this as a gift. Many times they will put it on their wrist and then they'll start looking at it. And that is a very, very good lead in to another question to them. And that question is, would you have a few minutes that I could explain to you what's on the wristband that you're looking at? And oftentimes they'll, you know, they'll say, yeah, I have a few minutes. So uh, we have this, what we call a gospel card. And all it is, it's five verses and the colors match these colors on the wristband. So the first color that you go with is yellow. And the other thing that we like to do is we like to give this to the person that we're talking to and let them read it, let them hold it, because it's scripture. So as they read it, they can look at it, the Holy Spirit speaks to them as they're reading it. So we think it's very important if they can read it. And oftentimes I'll, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, are you, you know, can you read this? You know, say, I understand that the print is a little small, so if you can't read it, it's okay, I can read it for you. But you wanna have them read it if possible. So you give them the card and they begin with yellow. The first color, yellow, we have a word for that and that's sin. And this, the first verse is, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Well, so you let them ponder on that verse a little bit. If they're just looking at it and taking their time and thinking about it, let them think about it for, you know, you may think 30 seconds is a long time, but they can look at it for 30, 15 seconds, whatever. And, but oftentimes they'll look at it and they'll look up at you to see what your response is. So then you explain it to them. And one of the good ways to explain this verse is, you know, as I engage people, and if it's people that are not aware of Jesus, maybe are not familiar with church, maybe that word sin, well, what is that? Well, I explain it to them a lot of times, it's mistakes we make in life. We all mess up. So that's another way of talking to them about sin. But you just explain. We all make, make mistakes and we fall short of what God's desire was for us. So because we fall short of that and we make those mistakes, that's what we call sin. That's what scripture talks about. So, I make mistakes, I sin, everybody makes mistakes. So then we go to the next verse. And the next scripture is Romans 6.23. And that color is black, and the word for that is death. So, this scripture talks about, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we sin, we make mistakes, then it says, but we deserve death because we make mistakes. Our wage, our actions, there's consequences for those actions. There's one word in this, in this verse that is the key. It's a key, it's a turning point. And what that is, is a three letter word, and it's but. It says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. He says we deserve death, but the end of that scripture, he gives us hope. And he says, I wanna give you a gift. I'm giving you a free gift and that is Jesus. So, that takes us to the next verse. And that next verse is read, and that word is love. So this scripture verse that we're gonna talk about now, Romans 5, 8, that covers, that takes care, that's an instrument, that's an option that covers our sin and death. And this is what it talks about. It just says, God demonstrates his love, demonstrates his love to us, that while we sin, Christ died for us. Jesus died on the cross knowing that we're gonna sin. We make mistakes, we are born this way. And so, God is demonstrating to us, literally, His love by sending His Son on the cross to die and be raised again to give us hope, to give us the possibility of not being eternally separated from Him when we die. And that's, a lot of times I try to explain that to people I explain to them being separated from God. And so, he showed his love, he died on the cross for us so that we can be with him forever when we die. So that's the third verse. Two more to go. The next one is faith. And the color is blue on that. And that's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And this simply talks about, by, for by grace you can have, you know, with faith. There's something else I want to talk about. 
As I share this with people, depending on whatever their name is, I'm going to use the word, I'm going to use the name Bill. And as I go through these scripture verses, I will use the person's name in these verses just to make it more personal. And it's amazing how that makes an impact on the person that you're talking with. So if I look at this fourth verse here, faith, it just says, for by grace, you. So I would say, for by grace, Bill, you have been saved through faith. Through faith in what? Well, faith that Jesus died on the cross for you. And that goes back to the, to the red verse here. So it just says here that you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. God simply gave Jesus as a gift. It's not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Okay, so this verse here, the faith verse, for by God's grace, I'm putting some extra words in here to explain it, and I do that a lot. For by God's grace, Bill, you have been saved through faith. You can be saved simply by your faith, acknowledging your faith that Jesus died for you. It has nothing to do with you because it talks about here, it's a gift and it's not a result of what you do. It's not a result of what you could do or will do in life. You can't work enough 12 hour days to get your way to heaven, to work your way to heaven. That doesn't help. It is having that faith and you can't do enough good. But I tell people, it is by having that faith that Jesus died for you, out of that, then you have the desire to do things. So there's a big difference of doing things because of works, because you feel you need to, or you're doing it out of the desire of serving Christ. Huge difference. So, a lot of times I'll, I'll take the person back to the beginning again, maybe, and I'll ask them again, okay, what was the word for, for, for yellow? It's sin. What's the word for black? It's death. Red is love. Blue is faith. Sometimes, I, I'll go through that two or three times with them. It helps them remember those words because as they, as they do this, Remember, you are sharing the gospel, but you're also teaching someone because you want them then to teach someone else. And so you want to take your time, be relaxed. Most of the time you can do this in five, 10 minutes, uh, but sometimes you have to do it faster depending on the situation. But you're really trying to share the gospel, but also teach them how could they do this. So you repeat these words and these colors a few times and that'll start sinking into their mind. Ah, I can remember this now because if they share it with somebody, then they'll do the same thing. So I go to this, this verse, this fifth verse, and that is green and it's life. That's the last word life. It's Romans 10, nine through 10. And it just, it just says, if you confess, so again, I would say if the person's name that I'm talking to is Bill or Sally, I would just say, if Bill, if you confess with your mouth and you claim Jesus as your Lord. Okay. What does confess mean? Speaking it, saying it. You speak it with your mouth and you claim Jesus to be your Lord. And so you're speaking it, but then it says, 
and you believe in your heart. So you got to speak it, but it's also got to come from the heart. So in other words, many people can say it. Many people can read this. Many people can, can proclaim it. But you really want to you really want to hone in. You really want to speak about this where it says you believe in your heart. So as you're teaching this, as you're sharing this, try to really focus on some of those key words so that you can, with an impact, let them know that this isn't just speaking it and then, oh, I can go on. No, there's there's a commitment to this. It means something. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Who's him? God raised Jesus from the dead. Then it says, you will be saved. Okay, again, you will be saved. Saved from what? What does that mean? Okay. Back from what we talked about earlier. Saved from eternally being separated from God. You make this commitment. You acknowledge Jesus that he died and he rose again. You acknowledge that. You speak it. You ask for forgiveness of your sins and you believe it in your heart. Then you can, you can tell him. You can tell her, whoever you're talking to. It says, you will be saved. Not, you might be saved. No, it says you will be. Or you could be. No, it says you will be saved. And that's usually a very impactful comment that you can leave with them. It begins to sink in. Wow. If I do this, this, there's a serious commitment to this. Then it just goes on to say, for with the heart a person believes, okay? Believing in your heart, resulting in righteousness. That's a big word for a lot of people. Righteousness. What does that mean? Well, there's a couple ways you can explain that. Right living. You have now made this confession. You've asked for forgiveness. Then I just tell the person, now God is asking you for a change of life. He, he wants you to go from this way of life to this way of life. Now it may not be instant, but you're taking this first step from this way of life that you were living and you've read these scriptures, you understand them. Now you're going to take that first step over here and you're going to be beginning to walk with what God is calling you to do and how he's calling you to walk. So he's saying, resulting in righteousness, resulting in a right way of living, resulting in a new way of living. Then it says, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation repeating a little bit what was in, in the beginning of the scripture. But it just says, you, with your mouth you confess, with your mouth you speak, with your mouth you have a conversation with God. And there's different ways that you can do this that I like to offer to a person. After you share this last verse, do you stop at that? You've shared all the scripture now. No, there's one key important aspect of this yet. And that is, you ask them, has anybody ever given you the opportunity to do this, to confess, to speak, to acknowledge Jesus as your savior? Has anybody ever offered that to you? Have you ever heard that? And if they want to acknowledge and if they want to accept Jesus at that moment, then you have a couple options you can give them. You can say, okay, you can talk to God yourself 
and I will just sit here and I'll listen. You just, you, you, you speak to God, you confess to Him, you tell Him you're sorry for your sins, you want Him to be your Savior, and you want to live for Him. Or if they're not comfortable with doing that, then you say, okay, what if I speak and you repeat what I say? That's oftentimes how you find the person wanting to do it. Why is that? Be number one, they're not accustomed to talking to God. Now sometimes you have a person that says, sure, I'll do it, because they are so, they are so um, uh, shaken and they're so moved by what, by what they just heard. The Holy Spirit has just taken over and they're willing to just give it all. So sometimes you have somebody that's willing to do that. Oftentimes they, they want you to pray and then they will repeat after you. So you do that because you want to make sure anybody can offer this, but the challenge is, the hard part is to then, to then finish that and say, have you ever done that? Would you want to do that? And walk them through it. That's the most exciting thing that you can do is to be able to share the gospel and then literally take someone from death to life by being in the presence of God and this person when they acknowledge Jesus as their Savior. There is nothing better. There's nothing more fun than to be present when someone does that. Many people are afraid to do that. Many people are scared to go there because they're afraid Ah, what if this person rejects me and says, no, I don't want that. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting this message, but they're not rejecting you. So don't feel rejected if anybody says, no, I don't want it. I've been rejected many times, but you just keep going. So now, as, let's say this person accepts Jesus. So you, you celebrate with them. But there's, there's a few more things that I want to address that is very, very critical for them. And you talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And I explain to them, as you receive Jesus, the, when you receive Jesus, now you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you and it's activated. The Holy Spirit is your connection to God. So you speak, you pray, God hears you through the Holy Spirit. God talks to you back through the Holy Spirit. So as you begin to listen, as you begin to talk to God, you will hear more and more God speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. And I explain to them that there's God, there's Jesus, and there's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is so vital as you begin to start this journey, this relationship with God, that you explain that to them. I love to explain that to them. That is such an important thing because they, as you explain it to them and as you talk to them about it, that many people can relate to the Holy Spirit. This what's inside of you, that God talks to you through that, through the Holy Spirit. So I always like to talk to them about that. The other thing that I talk to them about, oftentimes, as you share this gospel card, is also discipleship and baptism. So offer baptism to them, and you explain to them what is baptism. Baptism is an outward symbol, an outward action of what you just got done doing as you talk to God. You went from this person to this person, from death to life, from old to new. So as someone would baptize you, 
you are baptized, you go down under the water and down with your old, up with your new. Also, a symbol of Christ dying and being raised in newness as a new person, as a new creature. So I, I always like to offer to them, hey, what, would you like to be baptized? Have you ever been baptized? That is such a... Baptism does not save you, but baptism is, a, is an, import, is, it's an important moment, an experience of what you did when you read these verses of acknowledging Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord. And as you do this baptism, it's just there's a moment there that you can just reflect on being washed, this old, old self being washed away, and this newness, this new person that you have become. Now, is life perfect after that? No, because we still make mistakes, we still sin, but you have God now with you. God walks with you every day. God forgives your sins. He gives you hope. He gives you peace. The other thing, the very last thing I want to talk about, and that is, in the last verse it says, with the mouth you confess, resulting in salvation. I always like to address the salvation part. Salvation? What does that really mean? When does that start? I used to think salvation was, salvation started when I died. I've learned salvation begins the moment that you accept Jesus as your Savior. Why is that? Because the moment you accept Jesus as your Savior, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you a peace, gives you a joy, gives you a confidence, gives you an assurance of what is to come. You don't have to wait till you die to begin experiencing the joy, the peace, the assurance, the confidence of what heaven is. Now, heaven is going to be way more than what we experience on this earth. But there is a, there's this, there's, there's this deep joy, this deep peace that only God can give you through the Holy Spirit. If, you're, if you have not received Jesus as your Savior, you, you do not understand what that means until you, ha until you accept Jesus. Because it, it, it's just this joy that only comes from God as you accept Him. So that's what I like to tell people. That moment that you accept Jesus as your Savior, that's the moment that you begin experiencing what salvation is to come, what it, what it means. And so, anyways, thank you uh, for listening. I trust and I hope that this tool, this wristband, can be helpful for you and that this God can be an ad added benefit for this. And thank you.